session. Turns it off. Test one, two, three, four. Can you hear me? Okay. If we can come to order, please. I appreciate it. We are adjourning back from our closed session. We did not complete it, but uh, was there a report that you'd like to add? Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, Council is in closed session for two items this evening so far, Conference with Real Property Negotiator and Conference with Legal Counsel regarding this the is, I'm litigation. Not you up. Okay. Thanks. City of Gold versus Boys and Girls Club. There was no reportable action on either of those items. And the City Council will be, will be reconvening the closed session at the end of the meeting for items three and four on the agenda. Okay. We will now open the special City Council meeting. Uh, Liz, I'm not getting much sound. Okay, they're looking into it. I just went back and told them. It will open the meeting at 7.01. If I could have the roll call, please. Council Member Payne? Here. Claire? Here. Payne? Here. Meredith? Here. Felton? Here. I'd like to ask everyone to uh, stand for a silent prayer and remain standing for the flag salute. And Chief, if I could ask you to do the flag salute when we're ready. Thank you. statement please okay this meeting of the Galt City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cable cast without interruption on Metro Cable 14 the Government Affairs Channel on the Comcast and SureWest cable systems tonight's meeting can be seen on channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv <clears throat> this Friday and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city's website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. A VHS copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and <clears throat> give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Thank you. Are there any agenda approval additions and or deletions tonight? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we'd like to pull item D8 entirely. E oh, okay. Pull it. Award the Central Gold building in demolition and bring it back at the next meeting. Okay. I had a question on that, so maybe we can get that answered before the next meeting. I had a hard time finding the hazardous material certification for the uh, subcontractor that was listed for asbestos removal. So can we just verify that he does have a current license? Thank you. Any other items? None. Do we have any public comment? Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the audience may address the council on any item of interest to the public or on any agenda item before or during consideration of the item. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the council chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the city clerk prior to addressing the council. We request that you state whether you live within the Galt city limits or the county area. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for each speaker. Okay. Um, Anna, I'm sorry, Sixman in? Did you want to come up to the podium? Right up, right up here. Okay. 
And just state your name if you could, please. Thank you. Anna Deconan for Jet Construction. Okay, uh, we would like to ask um, uh, members to approve the contract for test construction for uh, for waterline replacement project um, for our Lord's bidders, two hundred ninety-seven thousand sixty dollars. And um, I don't know if you have any questions for us. Sir. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's on the consent calendar. So. Okay. Okay, and I believe John thought about. John Slaughterback, I live in City of Galt. Uh, I'd like to start with a lighter note tonight. Al Baldwin said I shouldn't criticize so much, so I'm going to start with a little lighter note. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, every member of council here I've agreed with one time or another. And uh, so there, there's not one council member here that I haven't agreed with and not one council member that I've agreed with 100%. Some of you actually surprised me with your knowledge on the subject and your favorable vote, favorable vote on that uh, subject. But if you vote to change the general plan, you will have made the biggest mistake you will have ever made. Council knew what it was doing when it voted for and approved of the general plan. Now, because of developers' attorneys are here telling you it won't work, some on council are looking for an excuse, a reason, a justification to amend the general plan. You don't have to amend the general plan. You can still go through the general plan and work on this later if you want. But don't. We've been too long on this general plan now to t turn around and spend 800, over $800,000 on the general plan to turn around and stop and do anything with it now. You've got to go through with the general plan. I don't believe, believe council will amend the general plan because I believe there are leaders on council who are intelligent and have the faculties of good judgment and know amending the general plan is not a good management. Council needs to get the general plan done. This city has been trying to get the general plan done for years. If you keep changing the general plan, the city will never finish what it started years ago. At the last council meeting, Al Baldwin stood at the podium and told us how much character and integrity this city has. I'm going to expect and hold every member of council accountable to those qualities. If any council member votes to amend the general plan, I will see to it, to it the public knows what kind of character you truly have. You all said you would complete the general plan, and that's what I expect you to do. New subject. Uh, Claire gave a report about the Lodi's uh, wastewater sewer increases, 7.3 sewer rate increase. All I ask is, Claire or anybody, state the fact and not just pick and choose items from the report items from a report that distorts the facts and lead the public into believing all wastewater problems are caused by state mandated upgrades. If state mandate mandates were the cause for all sewer rate increases, then all cities would have $100 sewer rates. We know, or should know, mistakes are made and when government makes mistakes, no one is ever held accountable. I can give you a list of it right here in Gulf and not necessarily staff, I'm talking about council. Uh, $400,000 for the Boys and Girls Club is the one that I can pick off right top. The fact is 7.3% increase in Lodi will span over four years period and take a three bedroom home's monthly sewer bill from $27.64 to $48 by July 2012. Galt's present sewer rate is 51.58 per month. Sewer rates in Galt are already $3.52 per month in excess of what Lodi sewer rates will be in 2012. And by 2012, who knows what Galt sewer rates will be. Lodi's wastewater problems have been brewing for years, and it 
all started with complaints from farmers in the area about groundwater quality, and that got California Sports Fishing Protection Alliance, an advocate of fisheries, habitat, water quality, involved in low-dive wastewater problems. These concerns generate additional concerns from Regional Water Control Board. The point is, I've got more time than I realize I'm going to have left, but the point is, if we discuss problems that, that increase sewer rates, let's use the facts and don't exaggerate and use some cities that have $100 sewer rates. That it should upset everybody in the city when we, when we give examples that the facts are not there. There's a lot of facts here at Lodi's rates that I didn't get into because I didn't, didn't have time, but he only touched spots he wanted to make a point of. Let's tell the whole story when we're telling these. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slaughterback. Pamela Sanchez. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pamela Sanchez. And uh, Cat Construction did a very successful project for me, so I just wanted to let you know that. It was completed on time. We did a, um, they did, they pulled permits and did the work for me in the city of Modesto on a private um, church parking lot. So I just want to testify that I was very satisfied and all of the people were satisfied. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Kathleen Amos. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Kathleen Amos, and I'm um, a member, a um, citizen of the city, live within the city limits. I'm here tonight uh, re for mostly regarding my role as a um, fireworks chair for the Galt Area Historical Society. I wanted to give a special thought, thanks to Donald Haynes, Andrew Meredith, uh, Liz Aguirre, and Randy Shelton for your efforts that, that in the working in the fireworks booth for the Historical Society. Each one of you. I donated um, your time or found someone to do a shift, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, it was, um, it's it's uh, very much appreciated in these hard economic times that we are, are able to continue to raise funds for the, to keep the Ray House Museum and the um, McFarland Ranch Living, Living History Farm, farm uh, going for the sake of all the local children and youth. And so I really, I just wanted to say, Thank you to all of you for doing that. Um, also, on another note, the um, youth master plan is moving forward, and um, you know, I've been working uh, on behalf of the high school with the elementary people from the elementary district, and also people from the city. Uh, and many of the youth have been involved in that planning process, and so it's a, it's an exciting process. And I'm not sure, you know, where we're going to end up, but I, I'm it's, I'm hopeful that we are going to end up. And I'm excited about the fact that the city and the school districts are all working together in a positive manner for the sake of the children and youth of this community. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Well, the next item is the informational consent agenda calendar. And I'll ask uh, Liz if you would read those off, please. Number one, uh, approval of the minutes of the special and regular council meetings of July 21, 2009. Number two, approval of the city of Galt warrants. Number three, wastewater treatment plant upgrade fund 15 payback to fund 14. Number four, budget adjustments. Um, of Measure R revenues in the amount of 95000 and adopt a resolution approving a supplemental appropriation. Number five, renewal, renewal of annual firearms range lease agreement with CDCR. Number six, Galt Joint Union School District, MOU, State After School Education and Safety Grant. Number seven, defer placement over, of overhead utility underground along the south side of Live Oak Avenue fronting the Consolidated Fabricators Project. Number eight, uh, the demolition project was pulled uh, until next council meeting. And number nine, award of bid for the construction of the 2009 water line replacement project, CIT number 58G. Thank you. Okay. 
Is there any questions or comments? If not, I'll ascertain a motion. Move to approve. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further comments? No. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Approved. Thank you. Next item. Presentation Present. of award for respect by the Galt Community of Character Coalition. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have our good speaker coming forward. Good evening. I'm uh, Mary Martinez with the Galt Community of Character Coalition. And before I uh, call up our honoree tonight, I'd like to remind everybody that for July and August, we're focusing on the uh, character trait of pride and community. And um, we're currently accepting um, nominations for those awards uh, because part of our mission as a community organization is to recognize individuals, families, and organizations that monitor the community of character traits that were selected by our Galt community. I'll put some uh, nomination forms on the back, so if anybody would like to submit um, a nomination, the deadline for that is August 10th. But tonight, we're here to honor um, Jeremy Balukoff for the character trait of respect. So if I could have Jeremy come up. And I'd like to read the nomination um, that was submitted to um, our organization. It is difficult for me to find a better living example of respect than Jeremy Balukoff. This superb young man embodies the principle of respect in a multitude of ways and is a role model for his peers in regard to this all-important virtue. Foremost, Jeremy has self-respect in spades. His commitment to upholding his own dignity and that of others is obvious when examining the quality of his relationships or the manner in which he handles challenges. He maintains high standards for his own personal conduct and establishes clear behavior guidelines for his friends and acquaintances. He consistently takes it upon himself to improve the behavior of his peers by challenging them to behave with respect and honor. When encountering insults, disagreements, or personal challenges, Jeremy seeks a decorous path that affirms both his goodness and the humanity of others. He is an example of sincere gratitude expressed through sterling manners and kind words. Again, he models this for his peers and has influenced others to express their gratitude more willingly and with greater consideration for others. For two years, I have been Jeremy's teacher and coach. I have been fortunate to witness this young man time and again live as a model of respect. He respects himself, has a deep care for the well-being of others, and will continue to serve as an example of the trait of respect for all with whom he comes in contact. I am very proud to nominate Jerry Bel Jeremy Balukoff for the Galt Community of Characters Respect Award. And this was submitted by his teacher, Dane White, from Galt High School. Congratulations. Item ordinances, proposed ordinance amending chapter 3.04 of the Galt Municipal Code pertaining to charges for processing bad checks. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. Recently, the finance department was notified that the charge for a bank fee for a return check was going to be increased. And as a result, um, we did an analysis to review the total cost of processing a return check, inclusive of staff time and materials. It was determined that the current costs are approximately $35. The city's fee for a return check was set in 1994 at 
Government code allows the public agencies may charge a reasonable amount to recover costs associated with return checks. Staff is recommending that the fee be increased to cover the city's cost to $35. In addition, it's recommended that the code be amended to allow council to approve an increase to the fee in the future as necessary by resolution. If you have any questions, you can answer them. I do. What is the bank charging us for a return check? It's $8 from the bank. They're charging us $8. And you're telling me that it takes us $27 worth of manpower to to handle that reverse check, to, to handle the NSS, non-sufficient fund check, is what you're telling me for a single check, per check. Right. When they, the checks come in and we have to um, do a letter to the customer, sure. um, process it in the computer system, that all has to be reviewed by a supervisor. Then there's the cost of the supplies and postage, and then following up on them is the real chore, actually, I'm concerned. Are our letters not templated? Do we not have a template? Oh, no, there's a template. Letter? There's a template. But there's different types of return checks. There's return checks from the market. Right. You know, so there's several different return check templates, actually. And, and what do you think the average check uh, is? What do you think the amount of the average check is, just out of curiosity? The major majority of the checks are for utilities, and so they're... Um, $200, $250 usually. Okay. I have a real issue with the cost, uh, to be honest with you. And I, I'm not part of the cost analysis. I don't have it in front of me, to be frankly honest with you. But one of the biggest complaints out there, especially with the public, not just with raising these NSF fees by the board or by, excuse me, by the council, but because of the gouging of the banks and other financial institutions and even in some cases municipalities much like ourselves, I'm not comfortable in these times in raising that price. I think that the cost of $30 for non-sufficient fund check is reasonable uh, for the $8 that we pay the bank. And I understand, you know, again, I mean, the cost analysis, you know, I'm not going to go over uh, whether or not I think it's accurate or not. And I think you did a great job, and I think you probably did what you believed was right, and I appreciate the staff's efforts. It's not something that I could support at this time because I just don't think it's reasonable. So, and I'd read through this and I'd thought about it. So I just want to put that out there. And perhaps other people may have comments or concerns. I don't know. I would just say that in the future, if if we're going to talk about cost analysis in our in our actual memo to council that we put in the agenda, I think it's important that staff breaks it down on a line by line basis, so we can see where you're coming from. Because I share the same men sentiments as Councilmember Haynes. I don't understand how we're spending twenty seven dollars. To, to deal with one return check. Uh, you've got a template. We've already established that. Um, we're talking follow-up phone calls, letters. It just it doesn't seem like something that would warrant $27. Now, that might not be the case. You might be absolutely correct in your, in your cost analysis, but I think it's important for us to see that on a line-by-line line basis in order to draw the same conclusion. All right. Barbara? I'm sorry, City Attorney. Um, Mr. Mayor, one option available for the Council is what you have before you this evening is an ordinance which requires two readings and the resolution. Mm -hmm. So one option would be for the Council to entertain the introduction of the ordinance for first reading, defer action on the resolution to give staff an opportunity to bring back the information that uh, the Council was uh, looking for, mm -hmm. and then you could consider that resolution at the, at the second reading of the ordinance and set the uh, rate at the uh, level you think appropriate. And then that way we'd have the complete breakdown. Yep. Right. The review. Comments from other council members? I have a concern also. Um, if we're only being charged eight, I think, I, I'm sure that, pretty sure that you can justify it, but I think it's important the image that we project to the citizens as well. I think that should be a consideration. If the bank is charging them eight dollars and we're looking at thirty, I think it doesn't project the image that we want that we care about our citizens. So I'll be glad to see what the cost breakdown is and certainly take that into consideration. Well just one thing to keep in mind, um, if the costs are thirty five dollars, which I believe they are, and the citizens who are creating the expense aren't paying it, then that falls by default to the other citizens to pay. So I think that's an important thing to consider that, you know, the people that are writing the checks that, that for non-sufficient funds are the ones that 
are causing the added expense, and they're the ones who are bearing that expense if we charge the appropriate amount for the return check fee. So that's just a consideration. Yeah, and it's a good point. I have a comment from, I think, city manager. I know this is tough, but if uh, people were honest and they hand you a check and there's supposed to be money there, then we wouldn't have the problem if people bounce checks, and that's an issue that we should handle. And, and I'm with Michelle. If there's a bounce check and we have to go through the time and the effort to collect it, plus the interest we lose, plus what we use the money for, it's not fair to those individuals who honestly pay their bill and don't bounce their checks. I don't disagree with what you're saying, Ted, but it's a matter of what's reasonable. I'll put things in perspective. Their check, utility bills are $200, and we're charging them 30 or 35 Their bank is surely charging them 25 to 50 I don't know what the cost is these days. I've never bounced a check. But I do have to believe that nobody would truly intentionally do that without some intention, some good intention of, of, of making good of the, on the payment. Um, I have no problem with Getting a, uh, taking a look at the cost analysis, which I think it is. I'm not really clear on the sophistication of our system, but maybe you could clear up a couple of things for me. Um, it, uh, the process in which a return check comes back, they come in bulk. In other words, the bank, do you get them weekly, daily? Um, daily. You get them daily, okay. Um, so when the clerk gets them, they go into the system. I just kind of run through the process to get it in my head. They run it, when they go into the system, they have to retract the payment, reverse it right into the system. Does the system automatically at that point, when you mark it in there and you put in the reason as a non-sufficient fund, does it automatically send a letter out or do they have to do that manually? It's semi-automated, but we do also have to review them. Um, for instance, if a check comes through from one person who's paying for someone else's account, the system automatically puts the letter to the person who is the account holder. So then we'll have to type another account. It's the manual pro processes associated with the automation that tend to take us a little bit more time to follow through with, but we do need to follow through on reviewing that and, and make sure that we're notifying all the proper people. Well, I'll give you an example. When I was in finance, I had a clerk. Yeah, it was an office manager. And we quite often would get non-sufficient fund checks, and we'd get them also on a daily basis. And what she would do is she also did them manually. She'd go into the system, reverse the payment, and automatically she would go in and uh, kick out a, uh, a letter the same day. Now, I could sit down and I probably could see her do this in less than five minutes. So I'm trying to visualize what the cost is when we go from an $8 charge of the bank to, to $35. So I'm just kind of, maybe you could help me out there a little bit. Well, actually, I, I did take the analysis that was done in 1994, and I did, believe it or not, reduce the time frames because we have automated some other processes. But the problem is that they don't, all, not all return checks go through the same process. As I mentioned, some are for utilities. That's most of them. Sure. Um, some are for the market, so that goes through a different process. The market has to be notified so that they can notify the vendor and prevent the vendor from continuing to occupy the space until they make good on the check. Um, some are for accounts receivable for other bills that the city issues, and those go through a different process. So it's not as streamlined as I would like to see it, but because of the different areas that we're talking about, you know, we've automated it to the best of our ability at this point. And I have cut some time frames from the previous analysis that was done. Um, unfortunately, the cost at, you know, the hourly rate when you burden payroll rates and you talk about how much time we're spending, not just line staff but supervisors as well, and you're making copies and you're entering into the system and then you're following up and mailing and, you know, dealing with the people when they call to discuss the return check. There's a there's quite a bit to it most of the time. So, you know, we did that best estimate that we could because we wanted the city to be able to recover its costs. Well, maybe the cost analysis can clear up a few of the questions that I have. Just for comparison purposes, if they, uh, let's say a developer doesn't pay a certain fee to the city and we send them to collections, what do we typically charge for that? We charge to the developer? Yeah. If we send them to collection, that, that's an entirely different process than a return check. And actually, if the city has to send something to collections, we, re we actually receive less than the amount that they owe us because the collection agency takes a percentage. Okay. Thank you. Carol, did you have any comments? I don't want to exclude you. No, I, I support what the uh, staff's recommending, but I also go along with I'd like to see the further break out of it. But uh, I can imagine the, the difficulties that's 
caused by having to deal with the situation at all. Uh, I know where Don works, I suspect if I paid my state taxes with a check that bounced, I wouldn't just have a bad check fee. I'd probably have a fine and interest. Uh, I know on our, our taxes for our income, I think the interest is 5%, I think, on the overdue payment. So I, I think what we're asking is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Mayor, can I add a comment, if I may? Sure. Okay. Um, what, what we're looking at here, if, if truly you just look at the numbers, is simply a 10% increase in, in a person writing a bad check from 1994 to now, and that's a period of 15 years. If you look at, we had, we've been charging $30, and the cost from the bank was 6 so That's a difference of $24. The bank's now charging $8. So the finance department is asking for an increase to $35. So that's a, um, and technically it's a net of $3 is what we're asking for here. And if you, and $3 is obviously 10% of, of what we're talking about. So we're looking at from 1994 to now, which is a period of 15 years, an increase of 10%. Staff salaries, I'm sure if we look through history in, in the finance area, it has increased probably more than 10% within that time period. So as I said, just if you just look at only the numbers, I mean, it's your final decision, you decide you know, whatever you want to do, but if you just look at the numbers, that is all that's being requested here is simply a 10% increase in, in bad check charges. I think we understand what we're asking for, but the problem is, I think the public wants to see that we're not just raising rates or raising fees to cover deficiencies within our own budget. And if you don't have a line-by-line -line breakdown in the agenda packet, people can draw that conclusion. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about this then? Uh, I, get, I think we're all kind of in agreement, and I, I kind of concur with all of you that I'd like to see that. So as a compromise, and I think we're all going the same direction. Our attorney kind of said. Uh, you know, waive the first reading, but before this comes back for the final, that uh, I think the term you both used, Don, too, the, the cost analysis. Yeah. So we could have that. We could further discuss it and make that final decision. I don't want to ask Michelle to have too much work, but I think sure. besides, besides what it would cost for an individual check, I think it would be important for the council if she'd go back and pick a year and show sure. how much in total it costs us for bad checks and that type of issue on a yearly basis. Okay. Maybe we could have staff do that, too. Okay. So you want direction and you need a motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if there's an, after you take public comment, mm -hmm. then I'd recommend you entertain a motion to okay. move to introduce the ordinance and wait for a reading. Okay. All right. Public comment. Come forward. Gene Davenport, City of Galt. The problem I see with this raising this to 35, you know, you can throw the numbers out you want. You can equate it to what we did from 1994 to now, and it's a 3% increase or whatever. The bottom line, I see a couple things that were brought up that nobody hit on. I don't understand why a supervisor has got to get involved every time. You have a department that's supposed to take care of this. Why do you need a supervisor overseeing everything every day? That's just a waste of money. Two, if you have an issue that, 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 that pertains to the, to the um, to the flea market as compared to the city's problems with collecting on the, um, on the utility bills. I think those are two distinct differences. And the amounts of monies are probably different. And so your collection process is probably different. So I would look at, I would, would, would request you guys look at that too because a lot of times you people, I, I couldn't disagree with you more, Ted, than what you said as much respect as I have for you because if somebody writes a check, if a, a mother has to take a kid to the hospital and doesn't for, foresee this cost in this economy, they're going to be short on a check that they already wrote maybe. What's more important, their electricity or their kid? I mean, you have to look at the big picture. And I'm just saying take these things into consideration because nobody's brought those things up. These are, this is just a bad time to be looking at this. I think it should be tabled and brought up again next year maybe when things are looking maybe better. But I, I, I just think that $35, in, in my opinion, because at my business, our bank charges us $7.
if if that's what it is, you go back to your bank and say, if you can't lower this back down to seven, we're going to look someplace else. I mean, why do we have to do business with that bank? There's a lot of things you should, you should be bringing up rather than just the, the, the cost. And I just think $35 is a little on the high side. Thank Gene, you. Yeah, and Gene, just for the record, I thought that through in my head, but I hope in the cost analysis we'll get a breakdown. It will tell us where the cost goes. So your questions, uh, your concerns are well taken, and I, I want you to know that I was thinking about it. But until we have the cost analysis, you know what I'm saying? We don't know what percentage that that's concluded in. Okay. I'm not going to disagree with him. If, if somebody uh, have, has a problem and, and they're hurting, I understand that. But the right thing to do is say, come in and say, look, I have a problem. I have to make a decision. Do I pay you or do I take care of my kid? Can we sit down and work something out? Instead of walking in and handing a check and knowingly knowing that that's going to bounce. It, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't think there's anyone in finance that wouldn't try and work something out or, or get a payment schedule or whatever else. But if you get a ton of these checks that people are just bouncing and knowingly doing it, that's fraud. Well, I don't want to get into a debate about it, but it almost sounds like we're looking more to punish them than to recover the cost. But no, but, but, I'm not going to get into a debate. I just but there's no, pun out. there's no punishment. Okay. You, no. You've used, now hang on. You've used a service that you, let me tell you what's interesting. You're going to hear my pitch on it. A city is the only place that you can go and use the service before you pay for it. If I go to the grocery store, they don't let me out of that store until I pay for it. The city allows people to use water and sewer and service and pay for it later. We're the only entity that I know that actually does that. Well, restaurants. When you go to a restaurant and you sit down and eat your food, Ted, before... They don't let you out until you pay, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. I'll uh, attain a motion then. Their motion. Gotcha. Okay. I'll try. I move that we uh, pass the ordinance. Is that the right wording? I uh, recommend you entertain a motion to introduce the ordinance. Okay, introduce the ordinance. Amending Chapter 3.40 of the Municipal Code and waive the first reading and continue the resolutions of the following meeting. Okay. That would be my motion. Okay. And I'll second that. And motion has been made and seconded. <coughs> Any further comments? Um, in addition, Steve, does she, do, does she also have to put it under the contingency that based on the cost analysis that comes forward in the next reading? Um, no, the uh, the resolution would come back for your consideration at, a, at the next meeting. Right. And then based upon the information presented at that meeting, the council could decide whether to adopt the resolution as presented or modify it okay. or not adopt it. Okay. No further discussion? Call for the vote. Aye. 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 No. Aye. Thank you. Next item. Okay. Uh, the treasurer's report for the period ending June 2009. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. Um, in front of you, you have the treasurer's report for June 2009. And I just want to say that as I was uh, walking into council chambers here tonight, um, council member Payne just asked me, you know, how, how is the city's money? And, and my response was, it's safe. And I, I also followed that up with, it's not earning a lot of money, but it's safe. And I think that's the, uh, the key point that, that I need to make um, to uh, the citizens here. And that is um, the very first uh, and foremost priority is that, is that the money is safe and that, uh, no, we're not earning a, a whole, whole lot of uh, interest. And, and I'll be honest, neither is anyone else. Um, the weighted average um, yield for the month of June is 1.8% uh, on our portfolio. And if you look at uh, rates, that's, that's actually about, uh, that's actually slightly higher than what the normal, normal rate is. Um, but I do want to also mention tonight uh, something that I invested in, in, um, in January were what I call non-local certificates of deposit. These are our CDs that uh, I purchased through through a broker, which I've done before uh, a few years ago. And that is I, I purchased uh, CDs ranging anywhere between nine months to two years, getting different, uh, different yields on them. And it also adhering to the FDIC rules that were in place at the time. If you remember back in January of this year, um, there was a, a rule that FDIC 
um, would uh, allow or, or honor $250,000 all the way through the end of 2009. Well, since that, and this is, goes for not only the city, but also for, for you know, um, John and Mary public, and that is um, FDIC is, is now offering that same $250,000 all the way through the year 2013. So that's that's now available. And I want to make sure everyone understands that. So um, that's and, and I wanted to make sure and keep under those FDIC rules because you know there's some banks to be honest that I I had never heard of. Um, I did did do a little research of course before I invested in them, but Bitterroot Valley Bank in Low Low Montana, never heard of them. Okay, but uh, we have a hundred thousand dollars with them. Um, there is also First Bank of Puerto Rico. Yes, I did research that FDIC covers Puerto Rico. I didn't, I didn't know that before, but they do. So, um, uh, so I just wanted to talk about non-local CDs. Also, this is uh, the, the one time a year when I always say what the uh, fiscal year-to-day interest that was earned for the 08-09 uh, year, and that was um, the total this year is one million four hundred seventy thousand three hundred five dollars and sixty eight cents. So that's the amount of interest that uh, that was earned. It uh, there's been higher years as far as amount of interest earned. And there's also been lower years. So um, it's it's uh, you know it's right in right in the pack. Um, so with that, I ask uh, that you approve the treasurer's report as of June 2009, and I'll answer any questions that you may have. Sean, yeah, Sean, 1.80, is that an all-time low for us, for yield on our financial? Yes. I mean, that just seems the lowest I've ever seen it, I, and I don't know of any other time that we could, I could imagine it being lower than that. It has, it, well, in of what I can recall, um, I, I do not remember interest rates this low in history. I mean, that's, you know, I'm 50 years old now, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, 1.80, it, it will get lower. I'm not going to fool you about that, and I'll tell you why. Because the uh, state of California late funds um, is going to be uh, somewhere around 1% in months to come. You now, it'll drop that low? It's going to drop that low, yes. And is, I'm, I'm uh, progressively moving money out of there obviously to try to find a little bit higher yield. You got to remember that, you know, the, the safety of course comes first, but what I'm doing is trying to buy agencies that pay uh, say 2% or, or more. And if you notice on page two of your report, <coughs> I've, I've purchased what are called uh, callable securities, but I have to go out to a period of five years in order to, to find a higher yield. So what I'm buying then is what are called one-time call step-ups, which in other words, five, it's called a five-year, say a two-year one-time call step-up. And what happens is that, that uh, bondholder, uh, Fannie Mae in this case, in two years they can call that bond, okay? Well, if they do call the bond, that's, that's fine. That's their prerogative. Between now and then, we earn 2%. If they do not call the bond, then it steps up to an interest rate of 4%, okay? Again, not a lot, but those are the only things that, that are available on the marketplace at, at that rate. Even at 2% is a lot better than 1% we're facing with the state lease funds, right? I, I agree, but you also don't want to put everything into into five-year insurance because right. then you have no liquidity in the, in the years, you know, two through four. I'm glad you're. I'm, I'm glad you're following up with that because we got almost 27 million dollars invested out there. I know. That'd be a little bit. Uh, that's quite a drop in revenue because that's 40 percent, 43.62 percent of our portfolio. Yeah, I completely agree. Now, just uh, this last month, July, uh, we did uh, purchase another local CD of one million dollars in with Premier West Bank. Um, and then I'm looking for you know other opportunities, but again I have you know I need to follow that that criteria of of safety first. Absolutely. So, yeah. well I appreciate all the hard work you've done. I think you've done an outstanding job. Well, well thank you. Protecting our money. Mm -hmm. Well again as I as I told Councilmember Payne, it's safe. It's not earning a lot, but it's safe. And that's and I'm, I'm, Yeah, I follow the rates every day. So.
looking for opportunity. Okay. Okay. Any other comments or questions? No? I'll make a motion. We accept the uh, report, Sean. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. No further comments. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Good job. Next item, for closure proceedings for Community Facilities District 1988-1. In December of 2005, the city refunded the 1988-1 CFD bonds. These bonds issued to fund public improvements in the northeast area of Galt are re repaid through a collection of special taxes levied through the County of Sacramento. For bond covenants agreed to by the city at the time the bonds were issued, the city must review the delinquencies of June 30th of each year and determine if foreclosure is required based on the criteria set forth. The first criteria is a delinquency ratio of over 5% and a reserve fund balance less than the required amount. Although the delinquency ratio is above 5% at 6.21%, the reserve fund is intact and therefore this first criteria has not been met. The second criteria relating to the property owner's delinquent in excess of $5,000 has been met. There are five property owners meeting this criteria. Staff is recommending that Council approve the resolution initiating foreclosure proceedings on these five property owners. It should be noted this year, staff will be exercising the option with NBS, our district administrator, to send pre-foreclosure letters to these property owners prior to sending the delinquencies to the city's foreclosure attorney. It is hoped that this step will help property owners resolve their delinquencies prior to incurring additional legal costs. The process will allow property owners an additional 30 days to remit payment on the delinquency with the potential to save approximately $250 in legal fees as well. This concludes my report. I'll be happy to address any questions you might have. I don't have a question for you, but a question for staff uh, in the city manager's office. The Walnut Cinemas project is listed under this. Does this mean that that project is essentially dead, the fact that they're going into foreclosure on there? It will if foreclosure is completed. They've indicated they're trying to do some other things. Yeah, so essentially the the theater project that they once envisioned with the shopping center and everything is, is dead. They're looking at doing other things with the property and I'm not uh, privileged to know what the status of their all of their uh, their dealings are, but we've met with them recently without, within the last month or two. We've talked to them about the possibility of um, locating the theater specifically on a different commercial property within the city because the owners of the property are not the theater owners. The developers own the property and they, they're friends with the people that own the movie theater. So we've had some discussions with them about possibly moving that. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of you know, the financial status of, of their operation, but they've essentially told us that the, that shopping center project is dead. But they are looking at other alternatives that we're supposed to be meeting with them about uh, within the next month and then whatever, whatever they come, come up with, we may be back to the council for um, some discussion on that in the future. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Um, I'm just curious. This, uh, are you allowed to tell us uh, where this property is located? Because this one person, um, Mr. Fisher, I know. has a whole list of them. I'm just wondering what, where it's located. Well, the parcel numbers are public information. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know what those addresses are. Um, but I'm sure we could get that information for you. Mm -hmm. Have you received any response back, or have you not sent? No, we haven't. Once council approves this, then we go to the county and strip the parcels from the tax rolls. At that point, we'll be sending out the pre-foreclosure letters. What's happened up to this point is the county has been um, proceeding with collections, so they've sent them their letters, and up until this point, we have not received payment. And I think I recall that something came up last year uh, with a citizen that said he never received the notice and I thought we changed our policy where we were going to require a signature or something. Of well we're making sure that they all go out certified but in addition to that this year before we send them to the attorney to do that we're going to send them out certified ma mail free foreclosure letters which is basically a last chance clear this up before we turn it over to the attorney and you incur legal fees. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments by council? What happens if they're already in foreclosure? What if their first mortgage or second mortgage is foreclosing on the property? Do you check to see if that's the case? 
I personally would not do that, but our foreclosure attorney, I'm sure, would investigate the status of the property if it got to that point. So it's, you can just lien the property and put your tax on there and then not have to go through the process if somebody else is already doing the foreclosure in order to get your taxes, right? You know, I don't know all of the legal procedures that the foreclosure attorney follows, but I do know that he'll send letters out after we send the pre-foreclosure letters. And sure. he will, if, if there's no response, then he'll do further legal research to see what the status is. Okay. Okay. Move to approve staff's recommendation. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. And second. Any further discussion? None. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Next item. Phase one residential water meter implementation. We've got to do the other uh, foreclosure proceedings. Foreclosure proceedings for 1991 reassessment district. Sorry. Thank you. In May of 1999, the city refunded the 1992-1 assessment district bonds. These bonds issued to fund public improvements within the district are repaid through collection of assessments levied through the county of Sacramento. Per bond covenants agreed to by the city at the time the bonds were issued, the city must review the delinquencies at June 30th of each year and determine if foreclosure is required based on the criteria set forth. <laughs> if there is a delinquency ratio of over 5% and a reserve fund balance less than the required amount, for foreclosure proceedings are required. Although the delinquency ratio is above 5% at 24.21%, the reserve fund is currently intact and therefore the criteria for mandatory foreclosure has not been met. Nonetheless, in order to ensure that the reserve fund remains intact, staff is recommending that council approve the resolution initiating foreclosure proceedings on all delinquent property owners within the district. Again, staff will be exercising the option with MBS, our district administrator, to send pre-foreclosure letters to these property owners prior to sending the delinquencies to the city's foreclosure attorney to begin proceedings. It is hoped that this step will help property owners resolve these delinquencies prior to incurring additional costs. This, prop this process will allow property owners an additional 30 days to permit payment, and there is a potential savings of approximately $250 in legal fees. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have on this district. Questions or comments from council? I don't have any. Move to approve staff's recommendation. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further questions? None. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay, now we go to phase one residential water meter implementation. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. The next item before you is a recommendation for award of a contract to HDR Engineering for engineering services for procurement documents and implementation assistance for the water meter phase one project. Back in December of last year, the council accepted the water meter implementation plan prepared by HDR and directed staff to proceed with the phase one implementation. Uh, phase one, if you recall, included all non-metered residences constructed after 1992, residents constructed between 90 and 92 that had a meter deposit, and select residents for geographical infill. We also have a, a, about 400 meters that we're going to convert to the newest technology. All in all, we have about 3,600 new meters and about 700 conversions. Uh, based upon the implementation plan, HGR recommended that we look at both mobile drive-by radio read and fixed network radio read as both being economically viable alternatives. Uh, we originally intended to take the HDR recommendations and prepare the procurement documents in-house. However, due to the specialized nature of the work, the complexity of the technology between the two options and our current workload, we've since realized the benefits and need for some technical assistance. Because HDR was familiar with our need, having done the implementation plan, we asked them for a proposal to provide this technical assistance. Uh, although most public works projects like this were awarded on the basis of strictly low bid, this would be done a little bit differently because of the differences in the technologies and the differences in what we get out of the product. It will be a combination of a initial capital cost, the 20-year life cycle cost, the qualification and experience of the firm, both the, the technology provider and the con installation contractor, and the technology itself. This way we can look at a 20-year life cycle and compare the differences between the drive-by and the fixed network. We understand that the fixed network will be a little bit more expensive, but provides a lot more benefits to both the city and perhaps to our customers if we ever want to go to a monthly 
meter reading, we can get that instantaneously as opposed to doubling our labor cost. We don't know if that's going to be an option or not in the future. They originally estimated a fee of about $90,000 for the work. We've negotiated a fee of $50,000 on not to exceed basis. We reviewed the final scope of the proposed fee. The copies included in your package. Uh, the proposed fee equals about 3.8% of the estimated cost for the improvements. Uh, typical costs vary from 7 to 12, so we've really got them down as a very, a very cheap and expensive fee for the work that they're doing. The total cost for the phase one improvements is about $1.36 million. Uh, their fee, again, is not to exceed $50,000. Um, I do want to remind the council that it was our intent back in December when we announced the rates that we were estimating a 9% rate would be need, increase would be needed when we implemented the water meters. At that time, staff recommendation was to roll the rates back, increase back to 4.1%, and council only authorized a 3%. With our intent, along with the implementation, sometime in the fall, October, November, to bring back the new rate structure for council's approval to have it implemented by January 1st. Um, we recommend that council authorize the city manager to award the contract as presented. Comments from council? I was wondering, and maybe you covered this in the past, the fixed network radio read. Have we checked with other jurisdictions to see how successful that is? Uh, the, con the consultant has. Um, it is a much newer technology, so they are experiencing more problems with that than the, the drive-by. The drive-back technology is, is proven substantiated technology. Um, also, SMUD and PG&E have been doing some of the same things. So uh, we expect a few more bugs with that, um, but every day that technology gets better. It's been a, quite a mix of the agencies that have been doing the implementation. Depends a lot on the particulars of the agency. Some of them are going with latest greatest technology, which is the fixed network, just because it is latest greatest. They don't care what the costs are. Others are deferring more to the cost, saying we'd rather have all the bells and whistles, but we just don't want to spend an extra penny. So they're going with the fixed network, excuse me, the drive-by, and that's the lowest capital cost now. Even though they may have ultimately long-term more cost for golf for 20 years the fixed network is still a little bit more expensive over a 20-year life cycle. We're at the 25-year before we start seeing a positive return. But that's not including a cost factor for all the intangibles of being able to log on and see your usage. You can see how long your, your kid's taking a shower and how much you see the pennies tick off. Or, like I said, being able to go to a, a once a once a month meter read. If we have fixed network, it's a simple download. If we want to do that with the the drive-by, then we have to go out and physically drive all the streets a second time and incur that additional cost. It, just, it varies based on the philosophy of the agency. That's one of the reasons why we're looking at bidding both technologies to be able to do a real head-to-head -head comparison. Thank you. Very last time we talked about this, and we may have just been specifically talking about the fixed network radio system. I'm not sure. I don't recall it. But in either case, down here we're talking about customer service, maintenance, staff related to increased number of metered accounts. Staff anticipates bringing these staffing requests to the council for consideration warranted. Costs for additional staffing have been included in the cost estimates and proposed rates previously provided. Last time we talked about this, I'd asked, and I think it was Inez, uh, and she's not here tonight, but I had asked because the system was so automated that if when the information was dumped, if the billings would be automatic. Is that still the case? In other words, if the meters are automatically read, they go through or whatever the case is, it's uploaded into our system, it, and then automatically statements should be ran out, right? Is that, the, is that not the case? Well, I'm not familiar with the exact building technology. It's one of the things that we're going to be looking at with the technology of how the new system integrates into our software. Depending upon what, what we buy, the system could give us a separate tape that would somebody that has to manually put into our accounting software, or we could get a, a software that is going to be a direct download. It's our intent to automate the process as much as we possibly right. can. Um, uh, I think I can answer part of your question. The biggest cost for finance is not the actual billing process associated with this. It's the time, when we, regardless of what technology we choose, whether it's drive-by or whether it's the, uh, the fixed network, right. there's going to be a significant increase in the number of calls that we receive on any kind of metered system. Right now, if you have most of our customers are flat rate. Right. There's no question in the charge. Right. You know exactly what it is, it's flat. 
once you start charging for usage, yes, people are going to be calling. How why is my bill so high? Right. You know, so that's the number of calls that we get. We have about I think 400 metered accounts right now. The number of calls we get on those few accounts quadruple the amount we get on all the other. So what happens now if you take those 400 and you multiply it by several thousand, right? Now you have many, many more phone calls from people on those metered accounts. So it's not necessarily the technology that's driving your 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 workload increase. It's the number of people that are going to be calling with issues on the fact that they're being metered now. I mean, you you've probably called the your your uh, electric utility before. Why is my electric utility so you know so high? And they get to go back and you research different things. And you know, it's just typical with any kind of metered system. There's going to be a lot more questions about why people's bills are so high. Well, all right. I was just looking at the additional yeah, well, costs for staffing. I, I just you know. Also, have to be, for example, a move in, move out. When someone shuts off service, we're going to have to go out and do an end read bill. We don't have to do that right now. That's a whole new system we're going to have to provide. We have to do a startup bill when someone starts their service, whether it's a read or a a direct read. There's going to have to be an additional download because if the when the someone starts, they don't all move into the new homes or turn on service the first day right. of the month. So there is, and that may take five minutes. But over the whole course of all the residences, there will be a lot of disruptions. There's going to be people calling that my meter isn't working or other things and uh, potentially more shutoffs. And that's that's the cost we're talking about. There is okay. some increase, but well, obviously between a drive-by or a fixed network, we save the staff cost of having to drive around, say, four hours a month to pick up all the um, reads. Depending on the technology, we may get save some money, have smaller transducers that takes eight hours to drive around to pick up the whole city. Those are the things we're going to take and worry about the bit. My concern is that with this type of technology and for the cost and, and the expense of the city is my anticipation or expectations is such is that the overall cost for the average citizen throughout Galt should go down. That's what my anticipation or expectations would be. No, that's not correct. So uh, correct me then, but so what you're telling me with this technology and well, not for everybody. I'm not saying everybody. For some, it should ultimately it should go down. No, that's not correct. All right. So it depends on usage. Is my yeah? I understand it depends on usage, but you've got a lot of seniors in this community, and I would expect that their cost would go down as a result of this. So you tell me that's not going to be the case. I I don't believe so. There is regardless of how we do that, there is the cost of the technology itself, right? Particularly with the fixed network. The, the individual home share of that technology, that is a, a significant additional cost relative to the water. So it would have to be a significant decrease in the usage of water to compensate for that share of the technology. That's one of the reasons why staff is looking at coming back with an offsetting rate to try to adjust for that. So we have a, a higher fixed rate, the base rate, and maybe change in the actual rate consumption. So we have a stabilization of those rates. If we maintain the current system and somebody was using a significant amount of water and then went to almost nothing, then it's, it's possible. But I think you're going to end up with the majority of people because of the technology cost. more. It's something we don't have to deal with right now. It's just all the additional costs of meters, the maintenance of the meters themselves, are all going to add costs. And I would like to say that, that everybody's going to be paying less. They will be actually paying though for what they use. There's a lot of you know, people saying, "Well, it's not fair. I'm not using. I'm not paying. I'm paying the same thing, and I'm not using as much as my neighbor." But they will only be paying for what they use. Okay. Um, I was wondering, in these mobile home parks, do they each each space have their own meter, or do they pay one fee? And then how would? From my understanding, they're all master metered, they are. where the property owner, whoever owns the park, pays the bill, and they would then pass that on to their. Uh, tenants based upon whatever lease agreements they have, whether they charge separately for the water or maybe just be included with the, with the rent. And so that's one of the things that as we come back with the new rate structure, we would then have to devise. We could end up setting some other type of rate, but we have to charge that owner based on the actual usage. And then it would be their responsibility to pass that on to their tenants. That would be their problem, how they calculated it. That would be their choice, yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the current practice? I mean, aren't those mobile home parks currently metered? 
Um, My understanding is they are metered. So with, no, this isn't going to change anything with the mobile home park. Master meter, yeah. They all are in Not individually, but they, master meter. Most of them have the master meter. They're already. I think you are. You are in fact okay. correct. Okay. I think we had a couple of people from the audience that had their hand up, so <laughs> we'll allow them to. You can go. Make sure that's the right finger up there. Mike Guthrie, <laughs> uh, my, my General Park Company. Just an example, I live in Elk Grove, and so I thought I would, uh, uh, I had a base rate at $132, so I thought, okay, that's a lot of money. So I said, well, I'm going to get a meter. I got a meter, the next month was $255, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it goes to short. But I will say, during the wintertime, it was $67, so, you know, it, it, but the 255 was sort of a shocker right out of the gate. So, but what they did in Elk Grove, they had a thing set up where the where the uh, staff came around and they gave you a little packet and and uh, checked they checked basically to see if there was any leaks and so on. So that was pretty nice. They they took time to do that and they put out a fo a, a folder and so on. So uh, and and they and they and they checked and I did have a couple of leaks that I should have had taken care of. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, it was uh, it was a shocker. You pay for that meter yourself? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, Elko Water paid for it. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say if you had it, it'd be like adding insult to injury. Yeah. So, well, it's, a, it's a good point about the winter versus the summer. One of the things we're trying to do is get these meters in the winter time so that the bills will be lower. The first couple of bills will be lower before they get the shock of the summer, which is typically. Typically, when the water usage goes way up because of all the irrigation. Pool and the spas. Was there another comment, was Mr. Davenport? Did you have a comment? I guess he didn't. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, direction from council. If there's unless there's other questions, Daryl, do you have any comments? No. Uh, it's the next step in this uh, process. It's been lengthy and one that uh, mm -hmm. was again mandated down from the state. Right. Okay. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Motion been made. Second? I'll second. And seconded. No further comments or questions. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. We will adjourn and to the redevelopment agency. If I could have the roll call, please. Board members Payne? Here. Claire? Here. Payne? Here. Meredith? Here. Shelton? Here. Public comment? I have no speaker sheet. No. But we have one item, information consent agenda. If I could have you read those, please. Sure, I have uh, approval of the minutes of the meeting of July 21st, 2009, approval of the redevelopment agency warrants, and approval of the treasurer's report for the period ending June 2009. Okay. Are there any comments or questions? If not, move to approve. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? None. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Adjourn and reconvene to the Gulf City Council. City Clerk's report. Oh, I see. I just got out of my Sorry. document accidentally. <laughs> um, so the League of California Cities meeting will be held in San Jose this year uh, from September 16th through the 18th, I hope. Yeah. Um, and I believe the um, the board meeting is on the 18th, where the decisions are made. At this point, um, I ask for council to designate a voting member and alternate, if possible, and we will um, inform the league of your decision. I guess first of all, we need to find out who's going. I'm going. I'm registered already. Are any of the other council members planning on going? I don't think I have any. I won't be available. I'll be out of town at the time. Okay. So, Andrew. Yeah. I have the presentation, so I will be right. there. Right. You'll be there. Uh, Daryl, were you going to be able to make it or not? No, at this point I don't believe so, so okay. it looks like we could nominate you to be our voting member. <laughs> I guess it's Liz and I, since we're the only two. You can do, uh, it doesn't have to be a council, it can be a staff, staff, member. staff member. Okay, it's so that we have some representation there. So your decision, what direction does council want to go? Do you need a nomination for you and Liz? That's so my understanding. Second. So the voting rep would be uh, Randy. And then you as an alternate. And Liz as an alternate. So we need to follow that through with a vote. Motion's been made. Seconded. Is there a second? 
Yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Call for the, any further discussion. It doesn't matter whether we say no. We're the only two showing up. So, <laughs> okay. All right. We'll call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. And just a couple reminders. Sure. Um, tomorrow, obviously, is National Night Out. Um, council hopefully received an email. Um, the, the police department is uh, going to have a caravan to all the neighborhood meetings. It's not too late to join. Just let me know and I will let them know. Um, also, on August 12th, there's a Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, it was canceled, the meeting of August 12th. Um, it was going to be held here in the council chambers, but it is now canceled. Um, on August 13th, the Planning Commission meeting will be held here in the council chambers at 6.30. There's a Beautification Committee meeting on August 20th in the City Hall Community Room at 3.30, which takes us to our next City Council meeting. Thank you. Okay. Any other staff reports? Jason, Jason. Comment. Comment. We've been uh, waiting for guidelines associated with the Energy Efficiency Block Grant. As you're aware, the larger cities got direct allocation from the federal government and the smaller cities kind of got left to fight amongst themselves for money that was coming down from the state and the state has released. They're not still not, they haven't been adopted by the Energy Commission, but they're th what they're calling the final staff uh, got draft guidelines and it r includes a per capita allocation to the smaller city. So we don't, it's not a competitive process, which will be good. It looks like there's going to be actually two pots. One will be a per capita, a combination of per capita and unemployment rate calculation, which it looks like we're going to be eligible for about $135,000 to $140,000 in energy efficiency block grant money. And there will also be a competitive uh, process on top of that. So um, we're waiting for them to finalize those. But right now, the good news is it looks like we're in line for a significant amount of money for that. And so we'll be coming back to the council once the, 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 uh, the guidelines are adopted and finalized, coming back and presenting options as far as how we want to allocate that money for expenditures here in the city within the next month or two. That's good news. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Okay. Any other comments from council? I mean, from staff? None. Uh, Vice Mayor Payne. I would like to mention that I attended, along with Council Member uh, Meredith uh, Andrew Meredith, the uh, grand opening of the Kaiser Trauma Center. And I, I feel like it's really important to our area to have such a fine facility. It, it, was, a, it was a nice ceremony. Um, also attended the Mayor's Forum on the HCP. And um, would like to acknowledge that I had received a, an email from Council Member Meredith uh, that there, in fact, had been an update, <clears throat> which was a question that came up. And I reviewed the tape, and there was a presentation by the uh, attorney for HCP in February. Um, it was a very thorough uh, presentation, but it was directed uh, a good deal on the East Bay Delta water project. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, but also in reviewing the tape, I noticed that they did not address some of the concerns that we have. They said this was the first meeting of, um, I think he, he stated, many to come. So there is a plan for future updates. That was the first, and uh, we'll look forward to other updates. And he will be at council September 15th. What's the date again? 15th. September the 15th. Rich? It's the same attorney. That's so mine. Yes, we're so mine. Just to clarify that, because Kurt and Jason have been working with Rich, uh, the presenter the other day, to, to come down with the time frame and so forth. Okay, uh, Council Member Clare? Yeah, I had mentioned last time that there was going to be an event uh, we we're having at the Amtrak station for a cleaner re-engined uh, diesel that's uh, part of the Capital Corridors program, and we did have that event and introduced that uh, upgraded piece of equipment and uh, a tremendous uh, reception actually by people there and also it's a tremendously cleaner piece of equipment so we're hoping it'll be the template for many more of the uh, engines to be equally upgraded to the more modern engine with some of the cleaner uh, equipment that comes on that so that was very good 
Also, um, I've heard a variety of things come back to me about a, a change I've had in jobs, and I guess that's probably focused around mostly I will be chairing the uh, SACOG meeting this month on the 20th. I intend at that meeting to uh, suggest to the board that they choose someone else to serve as chairman next year instead of myself, because this job's going to require me to be out of town more. But I will uh, be staying on the board, assuming council wants me to, as our representative. Um, I think it's in SACOG's best interest to have someone who's fairly close to both the office of SACOG and the Capitol on short notice. And as you know, for the last 17 years, I've telecommuted from home, which I'm going to continue to do. But I won't be at home as many days a week as I have in the past where I can just get up there quickly. So that will be my recommendation to the board. I assume they will accept my recommendation. Um, I've already had this discussion with the executive director and the current chair. I will serve out this year as vice chair if they want me to, or I've also volunteered to step aside if it makes it easier for someone to uh, get up to speed. So, But I'll stay on. I'll stay on the committees I'm on currently, and I'll let you know what they decide at the meeting on the 20th. Thank you. Council Member Hain. Yeah, um, I usually go over police report. One of the things that really stood out to me is there's 167 parking citations, and wit of which uh, CAPS wrote 146 of them. And a citizen's assisting police services, that's just outstanding, but it also shows you the amount of resources we saved by using CAPS, which is a volunteer uh, of our seniors. I mean, to me, that's just outstanding. So we are really using our resources very efficiently, and I'm very glad to see that uh, uh, how much of a benefit they really are. We've always known all along, but I like to see those numbers. It really is beneficial. Um, I, along with uh, Jason Berman, the assistant city manager, met with Mr. Gutrich regarding the Delta Greens project. We spent some time discussing the issues, and uh, I appreciate uh, Mr. Gutrich uh, sitting down and going over his uh, his uh, concerns. In addition to it, on Sunday or Saturday, I went over to the uh, a night in Italy uh, put on by the Historical Society. Um, I had a great time. Anybody who's not done that, I would recommend that sure you do go. Uh, it was very nice. The food was outstanding. Jason, you were there. You probably thought it was is really good, and um, I would like to make one suggestion in, a, in addition to what I, my comments. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, if you could, on the mayor's forums in the future, I know that it's really hard sometimes, but if we could get those times at a later time, because 2.30 is really hard for somebody like me who works. So when your forums are during the day like that, if it's all possible, if you can get them later, I would make more of an attempt to go to those, just FYI. Well, since you brought that up, uh, let me voice my opinion as the mayor. When I brought the mayor's forum back, uh, we all discussed that and uh, we agreed that we would have one council member and the mayor to sit with appropriate staff, and it would be Ted and our Jason, and we would sit with appropriate uh, builders and developers. The meeting was not intended to have full council there. That's why we have them sometimes in the morning at 10 o'clock or at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. If council chooses to want to attend the mayor's development forums, then I will seek another avenue. Because well, I, don't I know on special occasions like this is fine yeah. because the one we had the other day and we had two council members and Andrew showed up. Right. But it was intended to just to deliver that information directly to the developers with uh, him to announce that it's you know that item is coming back to council so uh, i plan on still having the mayor's forums but it's uh, basically an invitation only so i mean well, then, uh, we may have a difference the difference of opinion public isn't invited or well it's, it's for you and the developer no it, what I'm it's no it's mainly for it is when you have uh, the the intent was if we're going to have all the council members then let's just move it We'll have another meeting. We'll have special meetings that will be here. Okay. My intention is not to meet all of them. I'm just saying that I'd like to attend some of them at some point in time. Um, and my, I, I, my I, recommendation would be, if I could just interject one other item, is council to decide 
that you guys, if you want to do it, then we'll just, instead of me having the mayor's forum, where we just have a few people and the developers, that we have a special meeting. Uh, I'm a little I, I think you're mentioning that the, uh, the mayor's forum from last week was a, uh, an invitation. Invitation only. The invitation only, only because it was it was it's specifically designed for the builders and the developers. So you know, the I meeting can't last week. If I can interject for a sure. second, sure. The meeting last week was posted as a public meeting, and the reason it was because I was advised by legal counsel that there was going to be possibly four council members there, and I think a lot of the the motive behind that was the fact that it was a meeting that involved an update on, on that one item. Something that, that all of us on the council would benefit from getting information on. So mm -hmm. I think in the future if if something like that comes up where it would be beneficial to the entire council, I would rather that, that we try to schedule that individual to come back and brief all of us right. rather than come right and brief a forum of developers at two thirty in the afternoon. And I agree because I, I think what I'm getting from from you council members is that it's a special item. I would rather you say, hey, mayor, let's do this on a special meeting or let's do uh, you know, a town hall meeting where we invite everyone. But the intent, again, for the it was for the developers and the builders and no decisions were being made. It's just a, an avenue. I don't know if you guys remember, I said, well, I'd like for one other council member, and I think Barbara was the only one that stepped forward because she was on it before. So I want to still try to run it that way. I think we all agree. It's special occasions happen. So, okay. I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. Back in the uh, month of July, I attended the Golf Community Crusade, which was hosted by Golf First Baptist Church. Uh, the pastor of First Baptist Church invited all the other uh, church leaders from the community. Unfortunately, only the uh, the pastor from the Family Life Church attended along with the pastor of First Baptist. I was uh, very proud of our police chief for, for showing up at that event that morning. It was a great show of support from the city. As Barbara mentioned, last week I attended the uh, Kaiser Trauma Center grand opening. Kaiser has really stepped up uh, for the South Sac Sacramento County region. They've invested over $300 million into their facility. Those uh, improvements go well beyond the trauma center upgrades. They're, they're improving the entire facility with parking as many of you are aware, as well as the new medical office building that will house a Women's and Children's Center. Also attended the Mayor's Development Forum last week. Kind of disappointed that there were members in the audience who chose to make it a bash session with city staff. I think Kurt did a great job handling himself. Uh, just wish he would have defended himself a little bit better. I, I told him that after the meeting. Uh, there was a lot of allegations about the fact that the city of Galt was not kept aware of the progress of the HCP. Barbara mentioned an email that I sent out today highlighting the fact that February 3rd we did get a presentation on that. And uh, whether it was in-depth or addressed the issues that we have now, every council member was afforded the opportunity at that meeting to ask questions of the HCP. Uh, I also attended an event sponsored by Angelo Sakopoulos in Sacramento to welcome Drexel University to the Sacramento region. I think the addition of Drexel University is extremely beneficial to the region. It provides a, uh, an educational force for our high professional workforce in the city and in the region for development. Though I wasn't able to attend the last council meeting because I uh, was ill, I wanted to thank Fred Gaithel, who is our representative to the Mosquito District, for his in-depth report. I watched that, that meeting via our live internet feed and I, I think it's really great that Fred has stepped up and uh, he's making this an interactive process with the city council. He's come to us and explained the issues that are, that are coming up. And I had a question for staff. We got a pass through memo about an outstanding balance from the Delta Greens project and we didn't get an update as to whether or not that was turned over to collections. I believe a portion, if not all of that, a portion of it was paid. I don't know uh, as of today whether the balance was paid or not. Uh, there's no one left here from finance that can answer that question? I don't know. No. What we will do is we'll have a staff meeting tomorrow to ask that question and give you an answer in the box. Maybe in the future it would be beneficial for the entire staff to stay until the end of the meeting. I know these meetings are long. 
and sometimes they get redundant, but we save a lot of our questions for council comments at the end, and when staff members aren't here to answer them, we end up just carrying issues over to the next meeting. So maybe you can take care of that, Ted, so that it doesn't come up again. up and down when they do, and then they come here all the time, and then nothing's asked, and they rebel, and then when they go, the first thing you do is you have a question, and so but we can reinstitute that. Well, well, we'll try to come up with as many questions as possible so that they feel their time is warranted. <laughs> That's all I've got. <laughs> Good, Brett Andrew. Well, I attended the uh, bit of Italy too, but I had uh, math tasking that evening, and it looked like you guys were enjoying yourself, and I did too. So I was there for about the first hour. So I uh, just want everyone to please, uh, I know probably you will, but please support the uh, National Night Out. I think several of the council members will probably be out. I will be uh, visiting some areas. So, and did you have one other comment? I, I have a comment. I wanted to thank sure. them. Um, um, Councilman Meredith reminded me uh, the Mosquito Abatement District donated 2,000 um, off wipes to, uh, for the police department to take on their caravan to pass out to the neighborhoods who will be outside uh, oh, Tuesday night. So we'll be, we'll be getting those to the police department. And thanks to the Mosquito Abatement District for donating those. OK. Now we will readjourn back into the closed section. We have a couple items still to discuss. Thank you. Pardon me? Hmm. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, okay. we'll call you right back, okay? All right, bye. 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 My utility bills next month. Nobody else. <laughs> 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 <laughs>